Coming up next on The Jeff Crilly Show, no one more wants to pay more than their fair share of taxes to Uncle Sam. We're going to be talking to a creative accountant next. Many are predicting that the worst is yet to come, which is unfortunate, said one person here. Until now, they've enjoyed the reputation of being the nation's icebox. Watched a burglar in his home this morning by webcam. As a journalist of over 25 years, stories are what make my world turn. Reporting live from the Dallas Newsroom tonight, Jeff Curley, Fox 4 News. But in 2008, I took the jump from my familiar life and started a PR firm from my home. We're talking about anyone with a camcorder like the one I'm using becomes a television network. We started slowly growing the company and we now have over a hundred clients and we've branched into the world of live digital broadcasting. I now own eight different TV studios and have a huge team. And the stories that I now get to share are sometimes the most important of my life. Life has a funny way of coming around full circle. This is the Jeff Crilly Show. All right, it's time to have a strong conversation with yourself about your accountant. When you look yourself in the mirror and you know you're paying too much in taxes, you have to ask yourself, is my uh, accountant doing his or her job? And to talk about that today, uh, Dennis Burns, he is with the Burns Firm, and he calls himself a creative accountant. Well, welcome to the show. Thanks, Jeff. I'm glad to be here. All right, what is a creative accountant? Well, you know, um, I've been a CPA for 35 years, and I've heard all the stories about uh, accountants. They're mostly bad stories, and most accounts are not very creative. They're not very interesting, but I think we've that uh, my firm has kind of broken the mold, and we're uh, as creative as we can be in the Internal Revenue Code and the regulations and applying those to our client situations. All right, give me give me a for instance. What's a, what's one of your favorite stories? Well, we do a lot of. Um, merger and acquisition or selling of a business. So we represent typically the seller uh, and we do a lot of estate planning. So we're trying to get the, the business um, transition to the um, son or to the buyer at the lowest rate. We're very good at that. So he, an ex, a good example was I had a, a client, manufacturing client of mine, very successful, worth a lot of money and he, uh, the business was worth a lot of money and he wanted to get his son in the business. His son was working with him in, in the business and uh, he wanted his son in the business and there's just no way to do it without incurring significant tax. You can minimize the taxes, you can push them off, you can do various things, but when you transfer that kind of value, there's tax consequences, it just is. So. Um, we had several suggestions for him and he didn't like any of them, kind of pushed them off. And I remember very clearly one day, um, I was, I was in my car ready to go into a car wash and he calls me and I'm thinking I'm, I may lose him in the car wash. So he says, Hey, I've got this great deal. Um, a, a competitor of mine is going out of business, filed for bankruptcy and I can buy his equipment, his business, his real estate for pennies on the dollar. And I said, that's great. And he said, tell me how I should do that. And I said, I can tell you exactly how to do that. And he said, okay, I'm listening. I'm, I'm all ears. And I said, don't buy it. And he was kind of quiet for a minute. And he said, well, maybe you didn't understand what I just told you. He said, well, there's a competitor of mine. He kind of went through the same spiel again. And I said, he said, you're telling me not to buy it? I said, absolutely, don't buy it. He said, well, then I'm confused. And I said, have your son buy it. He thought for a minute, it's quiet. He said, well, my son doesn't have any money. And I said, I know that, but loan him the money or have the business loan him the money. We'll run this uh, competing business right along with yours for several years, and, and then we will combine those businesses tax-free. There's a code section under the Internal Revenue Code that allows you to combine two companies tax-free. So we can, so wait several years. And we waited about five years. We did the valuation. We did the combination and combined those two companies. And now his son owns a, a good portion of the total business 
and we paid zero taxes. Wow. Dennis, I am so impressed. I can see why you're so successful. Uh, we found a wonderful overview video of, of the Burns firm. Let's go ahead and roll that now. Hello, I'm Dennis Burns, Chairman and Managing Director of the Burns Firm. We are a CPA and consulting firm headquartered in Dallas, Texas, and for over 18 years we've been helping businesses and people just like you handling complex tax, financial, and accounting matters. Our tax division focuses on planning to minimize the taxes that you pay. Secondly, we file tax returns including corporations, partnerships, individuals, trusts, and estate. And thirdly, we help you deal with the IRS and any IRS controversy you may have. The federal and state tax issues in a business sale are complex. They require a unique understanding of the tax laws and the ability to use them for your benefit. For over 18 years, we have been advising business owners in the sale of their business on how to minimize their taxes and maximize the money that they receive from the sale of their business. We have developed and copyrighted a five-step process to assist the seller of a business. First, we deal with preparing the business for sale to ensure we have the right entity and structure in place. Secondly, we produce a confidential memorandum that talks about the business and its uniqueness. Next, we value the business and then solicit potential buyers and acquirers of the business. And finally, we allocate the purchase price to minimize the taxes and to maximize the amount of money that the business owner takes home. Whether you are an individual or a business, the Burns Firm can handle all of your tax, accounting, and financial needs. Very impressive. Uh, so what is one of the biggest mistakes people make when they sell their business? That's a good question, Jeff, and that's a really important topic for a business owner who's considering selling his business. And what often happens is everybody has a desire to minimize their taxes. And one of the benefits, I guess, that you receive owning your own business is that there's some discretionary spending. Um, that maybe is not essential to the business operation, but you go ahead and spend it and you deduct it. So you reduce your taxes. Sometimes people take advantage of that and really re reduce their taxes uh, considerably. Then what happens when they sell their business, they've got to go back and prove that those expenses were not essential to running the business, which oftentimes is problematic. Um, or it puts them in a funny situation with the Internal Revenue Code in as much as they deducted expenses that they said were essential to running the business. But now they're telling the buyer that these were not essential business expenses. So it puts them in a funny situation and, uh, and it also reduces their value because the business sells based on the, the profit that it produces, period. So if you reduce your profit, you reduce your, your sales price, and a sales price is based on a multiple of your profit, maybe four, six, 10, I've seen them even as high as 20 times their earnings. So if you deduct a dollar that shouldn't be deducted, uh, you're, you have 20 times a reduction in price. Or to say it another way, if you're able to put that dollar back or not deduct that dollar, you get $20 for every dollar, potentially, that you uh, didn't deduct. And you have a great example of a business that you helped get more money for the sale. Yeah, exactly. So we had a, we had a client of ours, um, and he was ready to sell. He, uh, he wanted $10 million for the business as a manufacturing business. Um, and we looked at it and we said, we think you, you should get about 12 and a half million. He said, why do, you, why do you get there? And I said, well, look at this. So there were some expenses that were not essential to running the business. Like, for example, he had a, a significant amount of security cost. So we looked at the security cost and I said, 
What what is this veterinary bill of five thousand dollars for tank? And he said, Oh no, he says, That's my that's my ninety pound Rottweiler. <laughs> and I said, Well, why is that associated with security? He said, Well, it's really not. He said, It's my pet dog and, and uh, he he uh, tore a shoulder out in the yard one day we had to take him in and had other expenses he he was a big boat guy mm -hmm. so he had a a very high powered boat and he would deduct all those expenses through the business and he was a big fast car guy and he deducted all those through the business so those were pretty simple but sometimes um there are other expenses that you wouldn't even think about not deducting for example he manufactured things, and every year he would spend a significant amount of money sort of retooling his manufacturing, making it more automated, it, make it more automated, make it finer, faster, cleaner, and he would expense all that. And several hundred thousand dollars a year. So uh, what we did is we went back and restated the financials and said, let's take that off the income statement and put it on the balance sheet, meaning not deduct it on the income statement and leave it as an asset on the balance sheet and amortize it. And we were able to, to show 400,000 additional dollars from Tank and the cars and the like and, and from his, his manufacturing. And, and that at that time was a multiple of six. So it was about two and a half million dollars, that, more dollars that we got him on the sale of his business just by looking very closely and taking a deep dive into his accounting and being, again, as sure. you would say, creative. Yes. And, and there's a difference between creative and corrupt. So uh, we've right. got some video of, of people doing their taxes and IRS stuff. What are red flags? What, what is the IRS really looking for when, when they audit? You know, nobody really knows what, they, what their formula is, but there are some things that are, you know, that are pretty clear. Um, the, interestingly, Jeff, the IRS is not auditing as many lower income mm -hmm. as they are higher income people. So if your income is high, uh, your chances of audit are, are higher. If your uh, Schedule C, which is sure. you know an attachment to your 1040, that's not a partnership or a, a corporation. They, the IRS looks closely at high income level Cs. So uh, in the case that you just stated, uh, tank the dog as uh, mm -hmm. security, had he been audited, would the uh, IRS have had a problem with that? Oh, yeah, they would have had a pretty big problem with it. But um, that happens. Uh, you right. know, that, that, that just happens. Well, give us some final thoughts. When do, when do people know they need a guy like you? I mean, uh, there's a lot of people who have CPAs yeah. and accountants. How do they know when they, it's time to jump ship yeah. and go with a guy like you? That's a really good question. And I would say the one of the biggest points is when you have a very large transaction. Let's say you're selling your company. You're considering selling your company. You get an uh, unsolicited offer from a vendor or, or a customer. That's a good time because most uh, CPA firms are not that familiar with the tax consequences of selling a business. So that's a good time. Anytime I think that your accountant, um, if he only sees you once a year, that's not a good relationship. And I've heard that referred to as a vending machine relationship, meaning uh, you give the, the accountant your information to prepare your tax return. He gives you a tax return, you give him a check, he deposits a check, and that's the last time you see him. You need a, a uh, partner in your business, not somebody that just provides one-time service for you. Outstanding. Uh, Dennis Burns, thank you for being such a great guest and uh, such a creative accountant. We're going to end with your website, which is theburnsfirm.com. Dennis Burns, thanks again. Thanks. That's it for now. We'll see you next time.